everybody and welcome back to Full Throttle with the Gent. I am your host, Brandon the Gent. We have a lot to talk about. I want to make this quick because the Mets are playing right now. I'm a little late to film and I'm sorry. But the Mets are playing right now and I want to watch them. All right. They're playing the Marlins. So hopefully it's an easy game for the Mets. They've been playing the Washington Nationals all week and then they, you know, they lost uh, one out of two games. So we're off to a good start. Anywho, modifieds, modifieds, modifieds. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful race at South Boston this weekend. After 18 years of absence, they finally returned to South Boston, Virginia, and put on a one heck of a show. Uh, Fans Choice TV did an okay job with, of covering it. The announcer could have been somewhat better, but I'll let him slide. Uh, you will be able to see the NBC broadcast of it this Thursday coming up on NBC Sports Network. Um, if you want to watch the race, it is on my channel. Okay. So... Ronnie Silk gets the win. He hasn't won in a while, so it's wonderful to see that man win. Uh, put on a really good show on a last restart. Uh, Jimmy Blewett finished third. I know I'm telling you who won, and I'm telling you to watch the race. <laughs> but if you haven't seen it already, uh, well, you know, I got a job to do. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, Ronnie Silk won. Um, had a real strong car. I was surprised that Doug Kobe didn't put on a good show. Um, but you know what? Things happen. But uh, South Boston, wonderful race. Really proud of everyone there that did everything. It just They put on a one hell of a show for the Whalen Modified Tour. And I can't wait for next the next race at Thompson. It's going to be really good. I will get that race on here as well. <laughs> um, but yes... Here is actually uh, the last couple laps of the modified race. And absolutely all Ron Silk from the restart of this race. Ron Silk's going to dive it into turn number one. He comes off a turn, turn number two, nice and clean. Clear track ahead of him down the back stretch. Ron Silk races a 360 feet into turn number three. Norwalk, Connecticut's Ron Silk comes off a of turn number four. He will take the checker flag and he will win the South Boston 150. Chase Dowling finishes second. Jimmy Pruitt third. Cal Bonsignor fourth. Burt Myers rounds out your top five. We'll chat with Ron Silk in Victory Lane here in just one moment. Once again, thanks for everybody joining us on FansChoice.tv. Thanks for everyone joining us here at South Boston Speedway. And Ron, I know I spent a little bit of time for you. Since, go ahead, but this trophy up here for now and. I know it's been a little bit of the time for you since you found your lane to uh, Victory Lane. How good does this race feel? And talk about that last restart. How, what was your plan going into that with Bert in front of you? Well, you know, we, me and Bert were both running the top, so I figured he was going to take the top on the restart. And um, I got a pretty good launch and tried to hook the bottom through one and two the best I could, carry some speed. I mean, we got it together a little bit, you know, coming off two. I don't know how bad that messed him up, but... Um, you know, we just had, I, I was way too loose the first run, started to fade towards the end of it, but I, I kind of knew once we pitted and changed tires that we'd be in pretty good shape, so we didn't change much, we just uh, stickered up and the thing was really good. Your last your last win was a couple of years ago, I believe, up at the Speed Bowl, and you had to come all the way down to South Boston Speedway for your next one. How much did you enjoy racing here today? It's been the first time since we've had this tour here in many, many years. Well, I, I loved it. This is, uh, you know, a first class facility. You could tell the amount of work and effort that goes into this place can't thank South Boston Speedway enough for having us, and I hope this can be, uh, you know, becoming an annual deal. How much does this help you build on going up to Thompson in a week? Uh, it always winning is always good. So um, we got some work to do and to get ready for next week, but you know, um, we'll, we'll try again then. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner today, Ron Silk, everyone. All right, y'all. So I had also added the Ron Silk interview uh, because he deserves it. Now let's move on to NASCAR news. Uh, in NASCAR news, we have a ton of penalties, okay? So, I shouldn't say that exactly, but I want to talk about a ton of penalties. The only after-race penalty, post-race penalty, was for Eric Almirola for a lug nut penalty, okay? That's the only problem after the race. But during the race was a lot of penalties. Now, here it is. Stage 1, Alex Bowman... Commitment penalty under green flag stops. Okay. 
Stage 1, Danny Hamlin speeding penalty under green flag stops. Uh, I think Stage 2, Danny Hamlin had an uncontrolled tire penalty. Alex Bowman rear of the field for a backup car. Oh, these are, uh, oh, yeah. Alex Bowman rear of, f- rear of field for backup car. So this is prior to the race. And then Ryan Newman rear of field for an inspection failure. He failed tech inspection twice. So his uh, car chief was ejected for the race. And he had to start there. Okay. Uh, let's see. What else? Um, I thought there was more penalties than that. Oh, here it is. Joey Logano tire penalty under caution. Uh, caution flag stops and that was the last one but that was a lot of penalties to be honest with you um a lot of the times we were talking about the tire infractions now joey logano and i believe it was danny hamlin they both had it and each time it doesn't seem like the the, the rule is right or it shouldn't have been said because the tire was still within reach. The jack... No. The tire carrier brought the one tire around. I forget which car it was. And I ain't going to make it up because I don't do that crap. Um, and they said, well, he can't do that. Why not? <laughs> it's the tire carrier. I, I don't understand. It has to be with the... Um, was it the tire carrier or was it somebody else? But either way, it was in someone's hands and they didn't like that. And it was still controlled. So I think these were really bad penalties. And I'm not even a Denley Hamlin or a Joe Logano fan. I'm just speaking as a competitor, you know, or uh, looking on the outside kind of thing. I think these are really bad penalties. They should have never happened, okay? They weren't like they were rolling away or rolling into the next um, pit stall. No. They were just a little bit out of reach from where they should have been. But they were still in the pit box. See what I'm saying? All right. Um, Talking about the race, Kyle Larson hit the wall hard. Um, Kyle Busch looked like he was going to do the weekend sweep since winning both the truck and Xfinity Series races. But uh, he had to make an unscheduled stop because prior to this, you see him going into, I think it was two, turn two. His car went right up to the wall. Okay, and he saved it. But the next lap, it happened again coming off of two, and he hit the wall. So that kind of pancaked the side in and started rubbing on the tires, and he would have had a flat had not he go into pit. Um, there was going to be green flag stops after that. Or people were going to stop after that, but he didn't have enough time to get back. So he ended up finishing 10th. Um, So Denny Hamlin won the race. He is the winner of the race. And it's interesting to think that Kyle Busch couldn't come back after that, possibly because it was too late in the race. But Denny Hamlin overcame two pit road penalties and missing pit road one time to still win. Okay, that was incredible performance by that team. Um, And he had a second and a half lead over Clint Boyer. So that was absolutely crazy, uh, the amount of power that car had. Sorry, I had to stop it. The uh, um, sound went on my computer because I have the Met game playing. And uh, the sound went on for some stupid commercial for Blue Moon Beer. Um, but then it went right off. I didn't even have to touch the button. Don't understand. Anywho, let's look at the NASCAR race results to move this a little bit forward. (laughs) Okay, y'all, here is the race results for the 23rd annual O'Reilly Auto Parts 500 from Texas Motor Speedway. With his second win of the season, Denny Hamlin captures the checkered flag. Clint Boyer was second. Daniel Suarez was third. Fourth was Eric Jones. Fifth was Jimmy Johnson. 6th was William Byron, 7th was Eric Almirola, 8th was Kevin Harvick, Ninth was Kurt Busch, 10th was Kyle Busch after hitting the wall and having to, to take two right side tires, 11th was Ryan Newman, 12th Martin Truex Jr., 13th Chase Elliott, 14th Austin Dillon, 15th Michael McDowell, 16th Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 17th Joey Logano, 18th Alex Bowman, 19th Paul Menard, 20th was a 37 of Chris Buescher. I will leave this up so you can take a look at the rest. 
All right, y'all, there is your NASCAR race results. Let's move on to NASCAR points. Okay, y'all, here is the points report after Texas. So Kyle Busch is still your leader uh, with 14 playoff points. Denny Hamlin has moved up to the second place with 11 playoff points. Kevin Harvick still remains third. Joey Logano actually fell back to fourth. Eric Amarola is now fifth. Brad Keselowski is sixth. Seventh is Martin Truex Jr. Ryan Blaney is eighth. Ninth, Chase Elliott. And rounding off the top ten in points is Kurt Busch. Uh, Clint Boyer is now 11th. I will leave the rest up to you to check out and give it another second or two to look at the rest of the points. All right, there's your points for the week out, the, the ending of this weekend. Um, make sure that we'll see how they turn out next Monday after Bristol. Probably it's going to be shaked up. Who knows? Maybe, you know, maybe stay the same. Um, let's move on to the NASCAR trivia question. Hello, all. It is Monday, and here is your NASCAR trivia question and answer. In 1993, during a double series race featuring the ARCA series and Winston West series, Darrell Waltrip came from behind to win. At which track did this take place? If you answer Texas Speed World, Texas World Speedway, you'd be 110% correct. Thank you for playing along. Tune in next week for our next question. But before we go further, I want to show you a clip from that race. Here it is. They know how to build and set up race cars for a super speedway like this. Jim Clark, the ARCA flagman, displays the white flag, and there is one more lap to go. One more tour around the two-mile D-shaped oval here at Texas World, and Darrell Waltrip will have another victory. I'm sure the people at Western Auto are tickled to death. He's able to pull in the victory circle and congratulate and Schrader is out of gas. Schrader has run out of fuel going down the back straightaway. He can't even contend, and, and he may be able to... He might be able to coast around, Benny. The uh, third-place car is pretty far behind yeah. him. Yeah, he might be able to coast to the... I think he's going to. Here is Darrell Waltrip coming down through the tri-oval and taking the checkered flag. Darrell Waltrip wins the Western Auto Shootout 2. And uh, Ken Schrader, despite the fact that he's out of fuel, does finish in second position. Crossing the line before Tim Steele and Herschel McGriff got there. And that was a pretty good battle down to the finish line for Steele and McGriff, but I believe Steele got him. I think he did too, and Dale Earnhardt able to hang on the fifth. Here they are coming down now for the checkered flag. This is the battle for third position. Steele and McGriff. McGriff to the inside as they cross the line. Yeah, it was a battle. Okay, y'all, there's your NASCAR trivia question. Uh, I will have a new one for Friday. Please remember to comment. Let me know what you think the answer may be. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I am thinking about doing a giveaway soon for this this TV show, YouTube show, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it's not a TV show. I wish it was a TV show. I wish I had a better background than my closet doors. Um... Anywho, <laughs> let's uh, let, let me let me talk about something real fast. So today I was getting all my news and taking care of everything, see if there was any other breaking news, and I found an article, and it was an AP article. You know, they're not known for their most truthful articles. Okay, whatever. But uh, they ain't even known for good writers apparently because. It was an article about Daryl Waltrip and Fox Sports. Now, earlier this week, the last episode, I did tell you that Daryl Waltrip is thinking about retiring. Okay, and the answer may come soon. Well, this person, degenerate, Jenna Fryer, okay, decides I'm going to write an article trashing Fox Sports and southerners okay she used the term carnival like yuck fest describing fox sports broadcast with mike joy and daryl waltrip and jeff gordon and other things of spinning yarns from the good old days like there's something wrong with that talking about the stories of that daryl waltrip has said 
they want my experience in the booth. So that means we want to hear about the older, you know, his opinion from where his aspect was. Now, I said it in the last video. I don't mind Daryl Waltrip, and I don't agree with him all the time. But you have to respect him. He honestly has been around the sport for many, many years. I mean, over 20 years. He has the intelligence. Is he a little out there? Of course he is. Am I? Of course I am. <laughs> you know, it's people's personalities, whatever. So he comes up with stupid slogans and, and whatnot. It's his personality. Let him be him, you know. But he, he, he does say some things that I don't agree with, and that's whatever. Okay? That's, that's, my, that's my opinion on certain things. That's his. We move on. He ain't that bad. Okay? Do I look at him and go, you're nuts? You know, of course I do. Everyone does. Sometimes, I'm sure people look at me and go, wow, that man's a blowhard. You know, or, or something, you know? I, I don't care. It's just, I, I'm me, I'm me, I'm me, I'm me. That's all I can ever be. I'm not going to be a fake person. I ain't fake. I'm going to tell you how I am. And what you see is what you get. I'm a gentleman, but I'll let you know how I, how I am. Okay? Or how I feel. You know? I mean, for saying that it's a carnival-like yuck fest, you know, and then you read this thing, and it's really condescending to Southerners, this, this article here, okay? And then she has to use words that you know she's sitting there reading a thesaurus, like, uh, what was the word? Gaffel, meaning a loud laugh, okay? Really? So you, what do you do? You, you pad up your articles with big words to make so people think you look smart come on you're not smart and i'm gonna tell you something she also what's the other word real fast malapropisms malapropisms yes the mistaken use of a word in a place of similar sounding words give me a break malaprop just say it's his way of speaking you don't have to talk down to your audience and everything my god I'm getting angry now. <laughs> I mean, you could use words as mannerisms or, uh, oh, yeah, the way of speaking or anything like that. You don't have to look down on your audience and make, I use big words because I'm a so-called writer for app. You're not smart. You have a thesaurus next to you, okay? I'm not smart, and I'm never going to play them smart. I had to look up what those words mean. I'm truthful to my audience. You should be too. You should be apologized to the Southerners for being a condescending idiot to them. Okay? And I'm going to call out any person I see doing this. Like I do with Dave Moody. Dave Moody is a pompous... Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. Keep it... You've got to keep it family friendly. That's all you... That's, 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 that's how you are. You're family friendly. But you're never going to let anyone get away with it. <laughs> I'm opinionated... And that's how I am. I tell it how it is. Okay? Now, it's sad. It's sad because it's gotten me thinking. Now, when I worked in NASCAR and even watched it growing up and whatnot, I've always never paid mind to the media side of things. Never cared, really. I mean, yes, I listened to Alan... Gu um, not Alan Gustafson. Alan Beswick, Mike Joy, and uh, Bob Jenkins. All these guys. Ken Squire, the greatest of all. Um, I never really cared. They were just the media, okay? But the Twitter media, the Twitter media, and the newspaper media, and the, the these rats, <laughs> these these gutter slime, they're just terrible. You know, they're they're just they look down on you, and they just they they. Dave Moody putting down the fans because he doesn't agree with them and this and that. It's not right. And I'm starting to really believe that if you want to talk about the sport that you're writing about, you need to work in it. Okay? You have to have drove in a race car or turned a wrench or been a spotter. You have to have worked in it. When I played hockey, I was a defenseman. Okay? I knew my job. I would be so out of line if I turned around and said, John, my goaltender, you're doing what you're doing is wrong. 
and you need to do it this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. I would expect him to hit me with a stick because I shouldn't tell another person how to do their job, okay? But that's why I'm calling these people out. It's their job to report the news, not give opinions, okay? Unfortunately, I'm doing that right now, but I have to stick up for the fans. I have to stick up for the drivers and this and that. Do I go on a tangent about Kyle Busch winning? Of course I do. Am I wrong? Maybe. Okay? Possibly yes. But, you know what? I'm not being paid yet. Okay? I'm not being paid yet. These people are. These people are still, you know, walking around freely, giving out their, their opinions, while I'm trying to make a life out of this. And I'm giving you the news about it all. And it just really bothers me that these people are putting down the fans, putting down the Southerners. It's a Southern sport. Yes, it's growing all across the country. Good. I'm glad it has. But don't put down its roots. Okay? The AP should be nowhere near the NASCAR facilities. Or the drivers. Anyhow. If you like this, please subscribe. I appreciate it. And if you listen to all that, you deserve you deserve a medal. You honestly do. Check out Full Velocity Racing Network, your source for esports racing. TDR.racing.net and the Hobo Racing League. <laughs> I'm trying to calm down because she got my blood going. condescending idiot. I will see you in next video.